the Rocinante, one of the most requested ships on this series, but how fast is it really? Like, could it outrun the Millennium Falcon? Definitely not. Anyway, now let's stay real here. This is Gambon's Run episode 14, The Rossi. Now, if you're new here, this is the light version of the series. Uh, here is the current leaderboard and disqualification list. It's a race to Andromeda Galaxy, basically, where the only rules are can we work out how fast the ship is going, assuming unlimited fuel and supplies, of course. Now, I've promised that when we get to the 25th ship, I will start a heavy version where we will get very nerdy and very technical and work out how far each ship could actually get before, like, crashing out, because I reckon quite a few of them will. But on to this week's ship. If you haven't watched The Expanse yet, you are seriously missing out on one of the best sci-fi series and one of the most realistic series. Blue goo aside. Sure. Now, the Rossinanti was originally a Martian Congressional Republic Navy Corvette class light frigate. <laughs> it was liberated by Holden and his crew and then renamed the Rossinanti, or Rossi for short. The ship has both a cruise mode and a boost mode. Boost mode will get to a high speed quickly by doing a high G burn. Cruise mode will reach the same speeds just over a longer time because they'll be doing a 1 G burn. Now the crew can only handle a limited amount of time in boost mode. They've got like special juice to keep them alive, but even with this, the times are still limited and they do need quite a lot of recovery time and medical attention after each high G burn. So in the series, when they escape the Donager, they do a 5G burn for up to like 10-ish hours. And then in the book, the Ebola burn, they do a 12G burn. It's not clear how long it's for, but it's a maximum of like a few minutes. Now, there's no theoretical limit to the speed that the ship can actually reach. It travels exclusively at the speed of plot, but we do know that it will not be faster than light. So it will accelerate to some value that will be like 99.9999999999, many, 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 many more nines percent the speed of light. So we need a flight plan. Now, if you do the math, the 12G burn nearly kills them and they need a lot of recovery time after. The 5G burn also is a lot of strain on their bodies and they do need recovery time, but not as much. Now, we could sprinkle in a 12G burn every now and then, but I actually worked out that one 5G burn for 10 hours gets to a much higher speed than one 12G burn for two minutes. So we don't actually need the 12G burn. You don't get very fast in comparison to the recovery time that you would need. Now the 5G burn in the show, they're normally for short periods of time. The hours long ones are rare. And like I said, the crew need resting and recovery time in between. So assuming that they have unlimited juice, unlimited medical supplies, and the recovery time is enough, I recommend one 5G burn for eight hours each week and then the standard burn at 1G for the whole rest of the time for uh, recovery. Now, the other thing is that the Rossi is a flip and burn drive. So when it's going places, it accelerates for half the distance before flipping and then decelerating the rest of the way. But we're not gonna do that because this is a race, you guys, and you don't slow down to cross the finish line. So with our schedule, we can work out an average acceleration. So each week they accelerate by 9.81 meters per second for 160 hours, and then by 49.09 meters per second for eight hours. And like we said, we know that it can't exceed the speed of light. So we use the relativistic equations to find out the time to each destination for that acceleration value. So let's see where this puts the Rossi in the race to Andromeda. An average acceleration of 11.68 meters per second squared will get them to Mars in three days. They'll get to the Kuiper Belt in 10 days. Reach interstellar space in 20 days. Pass through the Oort cloud that surrounds our solar system in 2.7 years. Swing by the Orion Nebula in about 1,502 years make it to the edge of our Milky Way in just around 26,972 years, and finally head out through intergalactic space to reach the Andromeda Galaxy in 2,506,809 years. 
at that point, their velocity is so close to the speed of light that I can't even calculate the number of nines that it has without breaking my calculator. So that puts the Rossi in seventh place, but it is the fastest of the sublight speed chips so far. How do we feel? Are we happy? Are we sad? Do you agree with my breakdown of what I think the flight path? I know some of you are gonna say, do some 12G burns or they could do it for a lot. But no, you've, you, like I really, really thought this through, you guys. I really thought through, considering the amount of time they need for recovery after each one, what the most realistic one that they could actually manage would be. And it's not that we have like a universal rule. The only universal rule for the race is that we can calculate a speed, but the speed needs to be in universe consistent with the show. Does that make sense? So like we can't just say, well, we know the Rossi can do a 12G burn, therefore how long would it take if it just does a 12G burn the whole way? Because we know that the Rossi in universe can't do that. That's my ruling. But like I said, and you guys have seen me, I change things if you guys argue the point. So it is totally up to you to let me know what you think. But in the meantime, let's pick the next ship. Gonna have to add some in here, I think. <laughs> oh, it's been such a long time you've been asking for this. We finally have picked the TARDIS. <laughs> oh, good timing. It's Doctor Who season. Alrighty, so the Rossi is currently in seventh place. The next ship we're doing is the TARDIS. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. And if your favorite ship isn't on here yet, then do drop it in the comments because you might see it next time. And if you disagree with my reasoning for this episode, make your case in the comments and I'll see what I think of it. I will be fair. Thanks for hanging out with me. Stay nerdy.